Hello, my name is Max and I'm going to show you how I work with Git on a day-to-day -day, day -day basis. Um, so you can see an, a real-world example of how Git can be used, uh, Git's at more advanced features can be used on real-world projects. I'm currently working on a project called MathJS, which is a mathematics library for the web browser and uh, for Node.js. Um, it's a free software uh, project, you can find it on GitHub. And I'm currently working on a, uh, on a feature in a feature branch called Parenthesis Node version 2. And I'm going to show you how the history looks like. Here is the um, version 2 development branch and here is my parenthesis node version 2 branch with the changes I've done so far. Uh, in the past I've uh, done something that I don't want to have anymore. I made this commit latex section wrap to wrap two tech wrapper in another wrapper in which I wrapped a wrapper function with another wrapper function because I thought it was necessary but it actually isn't so I uh, wrapped the uh, the wrapper function uh, which is under uh, which, which is two tech in another wrapper function renamed it to underscore two tech and uh, re renamed the um, originally wrapped function to underscore underscore two tech and I don't want to do this anymore. So um, I'm going to use an interactive rebase from all those commits onto version 2 and get rid of this particular commit and make sure that this is the the only one that I want to change. Yes, it is. Um, from this example, you'll also see why it's desirable to only do one particular thing in one commit because this makes stuff like that much, much easier or uh, at all possible, I'd say. <clears throat> but you can restructure commits at will. You can, can commit more things than one and, and split it up later but it's better to get it right in the first place. So git status shows that I have some changes that I was working on but I don't want to lose them so I'm going to use git stash and now git status again and you can see it's gone. Um, with git stash list I can see uh, the all the um, changes that are stashed currently. And this one, the unskipped tests that were broken by parsing parenthesis nodes, I think I don't need those anymore, but I'm not not actually not sure actually. So I'm gonna leave it there. Um Yeah, so what I'm gonna do is uh, the interactive rebase on the version 2 branch. So git rebase-i for interactive uh, version on top of version 2. This is going to show me uh, the commits in order from oldest on the top to newest um, on the bottom. Not not uh, in, in terms of uh, when I did the actual commit because I can change uh, the or the order in which uh, those are sorted, but uh, in terms of the history of the project, the commit history. So I'm gonna delete this line uh, for purpose of uh, this video. I'm gonna just comment it uh, comment it out so you can see it. Uh, still see this line. And what's gonna happen is that first the uh, the commit on the top is going to be picked here as it says pick uh, as it says pick um, and get applied on top of the version 2 branch then 
the next commit gets applied on the version 2 branch, then the next commit gets applied on the version 2 branch, then the next commit uh, is going to get uh, applied on, uh, on top of that and so on and so forth. And then this commit isn't going to uh, get applied because I've commented it out, which will make those commits then fail with a conflict because they depend on stuff that I did in this commit. So I'm going to have to uh, resolve those conflicts manually. And there are other options that you can do. You can do a reword to uh, rename the commit message, edit to change a commit or you can use this to split it up or um, uh, do more commits on top of it and, and stuff like that. Squash to combine commits, fix up to combine commits without it asking you for the uh, new commit message uh, and X to, to run a particular command. Um, I think it's gonna stop when the output of the command is not not zero, I think. But everything important is in this comment down here, so you can read that yourself when you, when you do a, an interactive rebase. So I'm now going to save this, and it's going to start the rebase. And now I'm on top of the commit that was before the one I deleted. So I have I now have to uh, resolve conflicts. Get status. Rebase in progress onto this commit. Both modified uh, parenthesis node.js. So I'm gonna have to fix this Git with git merge tool. Uh, by the way, um, you can set your favorite merge tool with git config dash dash global or dash dash local if you want it for the repository and not globally um, merge dot tool and then the name of the tool if you don't specify a name it shows you the current setting which is vimdiv in my case git merge tool so now I have vimdiv this is uh, this is um, the change set uh, which is the base of both conflicting changes so this is how it uh, uh, was before either of those was made. The right one is the one that is made from the remote, also is, is the remote change, which in this case is um, um, the, the commit which was on top of the latter exception commit. And this is the change from the latter exception commit, which is only uh, this underscore that got removed. You see this underscore? And this is the only change. And here on the bottom uh, is the file that, uh, that I have to merge the changes into. So here it says uh, hat has this uh, had this at uh, this position in the file and parenthesis node make use of the parenthesis config option this commit had those lines at this particular particular um, location in the file in my case i want to um, i want to keep the changes from the parenthesis node commit but i also want to remove the changes from the uh, from the other commit, so I'm gonna delete this underscore, which is what this change set did, and apply it, and then remove this one. Now I can save this file, and it's merged. Now to make sure that I don't, I didn't kill anything, I'm gonna run the test suits or the the. Um, unit tests
and as you can see all the unit tests are passing so I'm probably fine. So now that I resolved the conflict I can say git rebase dash dash continue and it's gonna continue rebasing and ask me for a um, commit message here so yeah that's okay that's uh, the commit message used previously so another conflict probably the next commit on top of that yes yeah, you can see here is the parenthesis node which I uh, um, with the conflict I resolved right now and uh, now I'm uh, I'm getting a new conflict with the next commit so another git merge tool so let's take a look this seems alright here another so you can see here is the underscore of in the base commit underscore in the change here and 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 no underscore here in this change set and no underscore here so I want to get rid of those underscores in this case. Um, you can't do a merge if you don't understand what the code is about and um, and yeah, generally, generally if you don't know what you're doing you can't do a merge. Yeah. <laughs> um, in this case I know that I want to get rid of those underscores because um, I only created them because of the double wrapping so another file merged and now the next file with a conflict so what do I see here another underscore that I can get rid of so okay Good status shows me this So I will run the unit tests again. Okay, everything seems fine. So let's continue. Git rebase dash dash continue. Now the commit message. About this uh, syncing. Um, that's a git hook, a git commit hook that I did because I once lost um, lost uh, the changes from the last 30 minutes because um, my computer lost uh, lost its um, power supply. Not the power supply, but yeah. Well, it was hard resetted while I was committing something or shortly thereafter and so I started putting the sync command in the uh, pre-commit or after commit hook I don't I'm not sure exactly so that every change that's still in in RAM gets written to the disk prior or after prior to or after committing to make it less likely to have um, data loss and because I'm recording right now uh, it takes a little, bit, uh, a little longer so it seems like the um, rebase was successful we can now see we have this exact same history but the LaTeX exception commit is missing because I got rid of it and I'm now gonna run the tests again And well, yeah, everything seems fine. So now I'm gonna undo the git stash. I do a quick git stash list again to see uh, my current stashes. Git stash pop to pop it from the stack, off the stack, whatever. Status. And there you have many conflicts. Stash list. Which one is it that it has been applying? Diff. OK. 
Okay. It's basically Yeah, basically this here. So this is a stash change, so let me think a little while. Okay, so I'm now gonna use the merge tool again to merge my uh, to to merge my stash changes, uh, the deleted commit into my stash changes. Git merge, git merge tool. And now, what do we see here? Need parenthesis. Need parenthesis. This. And here again get rid of this underscore and get rid of this underscore in this case so that was it for this file I guess yes next file new function that's uh, all right I deleted this that's all right now get rid of this underscore and this underscore again. So, another new function. I've done this new object. It's alright. One underscore instead of two. Okay, next one. Seems like I got rid of this two tag as well. Um, yeah, I want to do this, remove this one uh, as well. Now I have to take a look. This dot object dot underscore two string. Yeah. Well, I'm probably one. I probably want to get rid of this underscore too, but that's another problem. That's not a problem of this merge. So. That's what happened. I've merged all my stashed uh, stuff and now I'm gonna run the tests again. So, seems fine. Great. Little git diff again to... wait a minute don't want this to be in the staging area so I'm I'm gonna follow everything that it says here so git reset hat because I don't want this in a staging area right now okay git diff should show me those yeah yeah I'm gonna continue working on this as soon as I find the time and then hopefully get the pull request ready. So this is it for what I was going to show you. Um, in the part that is coming up uh, uh, I'm gonna screw, screw up a little bit. If you don't want to see this I'll say goodbye Otherwise, you can watch the rest of the video. I didn't expect there to be 96 uh, or 95 commits from upstream. Uh, and this kind of takes me by surprise. And one thing that I have to tell you, uh, in case something unexpected happens when using Git, first rule, don't panic. And if you are not so confident in your skills,
then it's best to make a copy of your entire project directory. So if you screw, if you really, really screw up, you can still copy the old directory uh, back and you have all uh, you have the fail uh, the failure state and you can go to people that are better in git than you if you can't fix it yourself and also git doesn't delete stuff that was in the staging area unless the garbage collector runs so stuff isn't lost it may only be hard to find and in fact so hard to find that you can't recover it anymore um, but keep in mind that it isn't deleted so if you decide to watch uh, the rest of the video have fun and bye uh, another thing that I can show you is um, if you want to get the latest changes from upstream and you don't want it to want it to um, kill your current changes you are working on. You co can do git fetch, which which um, pulls the latest commits without actually um, doing a merge. So so you have to do the merge manually after the pull after the fetch. Sorry. Okay, so we had changes to the develop branch. Here it says origin develop and to the version 2 branch. So let's stash away our current changes again and check out the version 2 branch. Let's pull them. 96 commits that's a lot actually <laughs> that's really a lot let's take a look whoa that's where we were before okay I think this is one of the pull requests of uh, my of the other collaborators of MathJS. So let's check out the develop branch. Git pull. This is one little delete commit and a merge commit. So nothing spectacular here. So now that the version two branch was changed so dramatically or changed at all I can go to my feature branch again which is on top of uh, the version 2 branch but no, uh, which was on top of the uh, version 2 branch but not anymore so I can now do a rebase again of my current uh, of my um, branch onto the new changes that I just pulled so git rebase version 2, now not in interactive one, but only a normal rebase. And what happened? A merge conflict in corded JS. Git status. Let's say I, I'm afraid of, of uh, merging this myself so uh, I can always do git rebase dash dash abort and ev everything is like it was before but in this case I I want to do the, the rebase so I'm gonna do it again git rebase version 2 so so what is this Local uncommitted changes not checked into index. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Git 
Copy paste. This is a board. Let's take a closer look. Where the hell did I change this particular file? Oh, here it is. Okay, I added some configuration options in this file. So, hopefully I won't kill anything. I'm gonna uh, keep a backup just in case. So, git branch parenthesis node version 2 backup. I know have uh, I now have a backup branch so if I screw anything up with this I can always go back to the backup and put this branch here back again. So git rebase version two git merge tool and what do we have here? This seems like this stuff has moved to another file. To libcore.js. So I think I have to move my changes there. Let's say. So what did I change again? new configuration options both modified core.js For now, I'm gonna use this one here and see what I have to do. Run the test suits. And we have a lot of failures because I didn't move uh, the configuration options yet. So let's go to my copy of, of all of this. Um, CDLib core. Um, well, I'm I'm gonna do this another way. Let's see where this stuff moved to. Grab dash up lip. Grab dash r config. Uh, that's not exactly what I was looking for. Decision. Number format or number expression function core core js so cd core where is this core thingy vim core js Wait a minute, there's a config.js file, which is not what I was looking for, so let's go 
to core again and take a look at the configuration options precision ah there it is this is what I have been searching for no gonna go to the to my copy mm, one above fjs copy then the file lib not lib co Yes. Wait a minute. So here we have core.js. This is where my configuration option lives. So now I have this. And hopefully that was everything I needed to do. Let's run the test suits. And it seems like they are uh, passing. So get rebased, let's just continue. Oh, yeah, right. Check out core.js. So now everything is okay. Now everything should be resolved. we can continue the rebase now run the test suit again and I've seen several test failures I guess Factory should apply configuration. Seems like I have the board at this point. I'm gonna have to uh, abort this rebase because I'll. Oh, 
it's already done so whatever I'm gonna have to get back to my uh, backup and reset it to here No. Wait a minute. Git reset dash dash hard. Right, let's let's take a look at git status first because before killing anything. Git reset parentheses node false version two back up. Many stuff lying around here. I'm just going to get rid of the test in the library of uh, directory for now and check them out again because I can't see much with all those changes. So that looks much better, much, much better. And bin cli.js. No, wait a minute. Good check out bin. Good check out core.js to reset this. Index.js tools. And now get rid of core.js.original. And repository is in exactly the same state as it was before I attempted to do this rebase but failed because I don't have the time right now to do this. So you've just seen a bit of disaster recovery. What I'm going to do now is maybe unstash uh, the current stash git stash okay Yeah, let's stop here for now.